okay so in this video we are going to discuss about the solution of mpsc mains examination questions especially the questions that were asked from the theory of structures part okay so we'll be focusing our today's lecture on the theory of structures questions so this will be now a series of videos which will be covering the solution of the mpsc questions or we can say the mes questions which were asked in the mains exam and each subject will be covered in the separate video okay so let's start this video in this video we'll be covering the theory of structures part so before starting the analysis and the solutions let's get a brief idea or let's discuss how was the paper or especially the questions from theory of structures and what could be an ideal score from this subject okay so the total number of questions that were asked from the theory of structures were 11 so total 11 questions were asked okay so all these 11 questions were relatively easy so you could have scored easily 11 out of 11 if you have gone with the proper concept from theory of structures some of the questions were so direct that you didn't have to use your pen also okay so that was the easiness of the questions which were asked from the theory of structures okay so let's start now so in this video we'll be covering the theory of structures solution the questions will be taken from the set a in the serial wise okay so question number 1 to 11 these are the questions of theory of structures so let's start with the first question it says a simply supported beam a simply supported beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load that is udl of intensity w per unit length on half on half of the span from one end okay so udl is not spread completely on the simply supported beam it is spread on the half from one end so now which half they have not told us okay so it doesn't matter also because it is up to the half so we can take it from either side now what is the meaning of this so first we will draw a beam to make it simply supported we will be providing here one pin support and one roller support correct so this combination is called a simply supported beam correct now the total length we are describing here as l and this is the center of beam okay center means this distance is l by 2 and this another distance is also l by 2 so now in the question it is given that a udl is present on this beam from one of the end so we don't know whether the end is from this side this end is there or the another end is there it does not matter why it does not matter because the length on which the udl is spread the length on which this udl is spread is same that is l by 2 and l by 2 so this is equal to this is equal to this one that is the udl from the right end okay so these both diagrams are similar only or we can say the deflection which is present the deflection which is present at the center whether the loading is present on left hand side or whether the loading is present on right hand side will be same so now let's go in some detail over the solution of this a small concept we have to use from this before using that we have to know what is the standard formula of deflection at the center if udl is spread over entire length so if the udl is spread over entire length of simply supported beam with length l and flexural rigidity e i so if this is the case we all know that due to this vertical downward loading there will be deflection correct the beam will undergo deflection at the center at the center the deflection we are denoting it with delta zero okay so delta zero is deflection at midpoint what is the value of delta zero standard formula 5 by 384 w l to the power 4 by e i so this is very much important that we should remember this there are many standard formulas that you have to learn if you want to if you want to crack the questions from especially this deflection part 
okay so this is the main formula that we have to use now what we have to find we have to find the deflection of the simply supported beam we have to find the deflection of simply supported beam if the loading is present only on the half portion of the beam correct if the loading is portion only up to the half portion of the beam now to understand this we should know one thing that whatever the deflection will be there in this beam let's say the deflection here is delta okay we are denoting this delta now in the second case if i just draw the if i just draw another simply supported beam and if i place the udl on the another side that is right hand side same l by 2 distance what will be the deflection what would be the deflection at the center what would be the deflection at the center what would be this value would it be same as delta this you should understand okay so if you want to just pause the video for one minute and think about this if the same load that is the same udl is present on the left half of the beam then the deflection at the center is equal to the load if it is placed on the second half of the beam it is similar to a statement which is taken from maxwell reciprocal theorem okay maxwell reciprocal theorem so you can just go and read this theorem so we have to use this concept along with the along with the superposition principle superposition principle so this superposition principle as i always say this is the superpower which we have in the structure syllabus okay so many questions or at least one questions every year there is it is present from the superposition principle so what is superposition principle so that will be covering in the separate video okay now so coming back to the main portion here so we have come to know that in the first case if the deflection is delta that is if the udl is present on the left half the deflection at the center will also be delta if the udl same udl is present on the another half of the beam okay now if we add these two okay if we add these two that is 1 plus 2 if we add this what will be getting will be getting a simply supported beam a simply supported beam okay and what will be the udl that will be present the udl will be from this first beam it will be present up to the half correct up to this l by 2 distance and from this second portion it will be the another half are you getting this what we are doing we are taking the effects of udl from first beam and effect of udl from the second beam so both we are combining here so we'll get the overall udl that is present as w okay and the deflection which is present here at the center the deflection which we are getting here at the center this will be equal to this delta plus this another delta okay so delta plus delta it is equal to 2 delta now if you just relate this it is similar to this standard case correct it is similar to the standard case so as you can see our 2 delta our 2 delta it is equal to delta 0 but what we want to find out we want to find out only delta that is if the udl is present only on the half portion so delta value it is equal to delta 0 divided by 2 so this is the most important relation that we are getting it from the equation okay so now substitute the value of delta 0 and get the answer so substituting this delta 0 value what is the value of delta 0 5 by 384 wl to the power 4 by ei okay and this whole divided by 2 so the final answer will be 5 by 384 multiplied by 2 that is equal to 
डब्ल्यू एल टू द पावर फोर बाय सो दिस इज द डिफ्लेक्शन इफ द यूडीएल इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द हाफ पोर्शन ऑफ द बीम सो दैट इज द सेकंड ऑप्शन ओके ना लेट्स मूव टू द सेकंड क्वेश्चन सो इन डिटर्मिनेसी इन द स्ट्रक्चर मे रिजल्ट फ्रॉम सो देर आर फोर ऑप्शन मल्टीपल रिएक्शन एक्स्ट्रा बार्स इंट्रस्ट फिक्स्ड सपोर्ट्स इन फ्रेम्स एंड ज्योमेट्री ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स सो इन डिटर्मिनेसी सो टोटल इन डिटर्मिनेसी इट इज इक्वल टू इंटरनल इन डिटर्मिनेसी प्लस एक्सटर्नल इन डिटर्मिनेसी सो दिस इज टोटल इन डिटर्मिनेसी इट इज इक्वल टू इंटरनल प्लस एक्सटर्नल okay now for getting the solution of or we can say for getting the answer of this question what you, what is required is only the formulas okay if you just write the formulas then you will be able to get the correct answer now to find out this total indeterminacy that is the ds the ds is categorized into two things okay that is ds for frames and ts for trusses okay now the standard formula for finding out the total indeterminacy in frames is 3m plus r that is ds is equal to 3m plus r minus 3j okay and for the truss ds is equal to m plus r minus 2j m plus r minus 2j now what is the what is m here what is r and what is j so this m is number of members m is number of members r is number of reactions number of reactions and j is number of number of joints correct okay now coming back to the question so indeterminacy in the structure may result from that means this indeterminacy will be caused by which of the following factors so first one is multiple reactions so is the indeterminacy caused due to reactions here so yes you can see there is the r value here this r stands for reactions number of reaction that is multiple reaction so this is correct then second is extra bar in trusses extra bars in trusses that means extra members in trusses okay extra members in trusses so in the truss you can see the indeterminacy it is caused due to members okay or extra bars if the number of members are more that means the number of bars are more okay so that means this is also correct third one is fixed support in frames fixed supports will bring out what it will bring out more reactions okay it will bring out more reactions so we also have the reactions here the fourth one is the fourth one is geometry of structures so clearly if you just see these formulas nowhere the geometry of structure is mentioned okay there is nothing which is mentioned that the geometry should be triangular or rectangular or something else okay so nothing is mentioned about the geometry so the fourth option is not correct and the first three options are correct so if you look at look at the final options we will get the first answer as correct that is a b and c okay so let's move to the third question which of the following is carried by truss member so this is a direct question the truss can carry only the axial load it cannot carry the shear load or flexure load okay so if you just see the assumptions in the trusses then you will see that whenever we are drawing the truss or whenever we are calculating the forces in truss we are never calculating shear force or flexural load in case of truss we are only calculating what we are only calculating the axial load okay so there is only one load that is axial load so the correct answer is first one okay so now the fourth question it is taken from the slope deflection method that is sdm and in this question a beam is given and we have to find out mab and mbc mab and mbc so let's write down the formula for mab first so mab 
so according to slope deflection equation mab it is equal to mfab plus 2ei by l 2 theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta by l so this is the slope deflection equation okay now similarly for the second one that is mab second equation is for mbc that is this portion mbc so mbc it is equal to mfbc plus 2 ei by l then 2 theta b plus theta c minus 3 delta by l so these are the formulas now mfab means a fixed end movement at ab so to calculate this mfab what we need is we need to draw a fixed beam here so this is a and b we are assuming that it is fixed what is the load here 4 kilo newton per meter so the loading here is 4 and the length is 3 length is 3 so mf ab so this movement is mf ab so using the direct formula mf ab it is equal to minus wl square by 12 so minus w is 4 here 4 l value is 3 3 square divided by 12 okay so 3 ones are 3 fours are this 4 and 4 will get cancelled minus 3 so mfab is minus 3 okay so now substitute this in mab that is the first equation mab it is equal to minus 3 plus 2 ei divided by l the value of l is 3 value of l is 3 then in bracket 2 theta a what is the value of theta a this support is fixed here that means the value of theta a is 0 okay and theta b the value will be there so here theta a is 0 that means 2 into 0 plus theta b and nothing is mentioned about the deflection so delta is also 0 so this is 0 so now solving this we will get minus 3 plus 2 divided by 3 0 0.67 ei theta b this is cancelled this is also cancelled so theta b okay so this is the equation for mab similarly for mbc now we will be finding it out directly mfbc it is equal to mfbc it is equal to wl square by 12 w l square divided by 12 okay so where is this mfbc so see this is the bc portion from b to c so if you just want we can draw it here again so this is b and this is c so as we have to assume this as fixed we want to find out this moment okay this is mfbc what is the value of this the value is minus wl square by 12 the value of udl here on this portion is 5 and the length is 4 so this is 5 and the length is 4 substitute minus 5 into 4 square divided by 12 so you will get the answer here as minus 6.67 so that is mfbc substitute it in the first equation mbc is equal to minus 6.67 plus 2 ei by l 2 ei by l what is the value of l 4 then here it is 2 theta b what is the value of theta b the theta b here is not 0 there is some value for theta b so we will have to substitute the theta b here it is 2 theta b 2 theta b what is the value of theta c theta c is this location here that is the last point it is a fixed support so theta c it is equal to 0 so plus 0 no deflection so this is also 0 so finally we will get minus 6.67 plus 
2 into 2 4 this 4 and 4 will get cancel so e i theta v so this is m b c okay so if you just see the uh, options then in the options we are getting the first option as correct okay so the fourth is the correct answer for fourth question is first option now <clears throat> going to the fifth question so pick the correct moment equilibrium condition considering the following figure okay so in this we just have to use a simple concept that is all the anti clockwise movement all the anti clockwise movements is equal to clockwise movements at that point so if you just use it at point 1 so at point 1 what is the anti clockwise movement here what is the anti clockwise movement m1 so m1 it is equal to clockwise movement m12 m12 at second point that is the second point here second joint what is the anti clockwise movement so here anti clockwise is m2 so m2 what are the clockwise movement m21 and m23 so we have to add this so m21 plus m23 then the third one is in anti clockwise direction it is m3 is equal to m32 m3 is equal to m32 okay so we'll just check the options m3 is equal to m32 then m2 is equal to m21 plus m23 and m1 is equal to that is the first option okay so for fifth also the option is first one. okay so coming to the sixth question now so this is the direct theory question if you just uh, have solved some questions of movement distribution method then you can get the answer directly so pick up the correct statement with respect to movement distribution method so the fir first statement is movement distribution method consists in successively locking and releasing the joints okay the second statement is the first locking movements are fixed end movements due to applied loading so if you just remember i will just draw it in a simple manner so for the joints for the joints let's say a b and c we are calculating the distribution factors okay we are calculating the distribution factors let's say this is 0.5 and 0.5 distribution factors after that we are calculating the fixed end movements okay so these fixed end movements are calculated on what basis they are calculated on the basis of given loading on the beam so that fixed end movements we are writing it whatever the movements are there so in this case i am taking these values okay so these are the fixed end movements now what we are doing we are releasing the joint or we are balancing this joint so these both statements are mentioned here only the first statement is the movement distribution method consists in locking and releasing the joint releasing the joints okay that means we are balancing it and the second statement is the first locking movements are the fixed end movements correct we are calculating the fixed end movements due to the applied loading so the second statement is also correct so both a and b are correct so the answer for sixth question is c okay again a very very simple question carry over movement concept so carry over movement at end b the carry over movement at end b due to the movement applied due to the movement m applied at end a for given prop cantilever beam is okay so here in the carry over movement concept there are only two things that you have to pay attention there are only two things that you have to pay attention whether the far end whether the far end is free or the far end is fixed what is the meaning of far end free and far end fixed so let's take this example here this is a simply supported beam or we can say this is a simply support and on the second portion on the second portion there is and also a, a roller support that means this beam is a simply supported beam now if i am applying a movement m here the direction of the movement is clockwise movement okay 
if i am applying a movement m on this point a then what will be the carry over movement at point b the carry over movement at point b will be zero this is the first thing and which type of end this is this is the free end that is it is coming under the category of far end free whereas in second case in second case if this is a simple support or we can say it is a pin support and there is and there is a fixed support at the far end so this is called as far end a movement m is applied in clockwise direction at point a what will be the movement or what you can say what will be the carry over movement at point b so due to the application of this movement m the and the far end is fixed the amount of movement that will be carry over will be half of the applied movement so in this case as the movement is m what will be the carry over movement what will the carry over movement so the carry over movement will be equal to m divided by 2 okay so the movement that will be present here will be m divided by 2 now the another thing that you should know that what will be the direction of the carry over movement so this point you have to understand that whatever the movement is carry over the direction will be same as the applied movement so here the direction of applied movement is what it is in clockwise direction so this carry over movement will also be in the clockwise direction so in this case as it is plus m then the movement that will be carry over will also be equal to plus m by 2 okay so from this this is the same condition far and fixed so if m is applied at point a what will be the carry over movement at point b m by 2 what will be the direction same direction that is clockwise direction so plus m plus m by 2 third option is correct Okay, now these two questions are very very easy and straightforward. See what is the first question? Who has invented and when the movement distribution method? So who invented movement distribution method? Hardy Cross. Okay. So the question number nine: Distribution factor for member depends on what? Distribution factor. So this concept is taken from movement distribution method. So to understand this, I am drawing here. A joint A, or we can say a joint O, and this all are supported here. Two are fixed and one is pin. Now distribution factor, that is DF. Distribution factor, it is equal to stiffness of beam, stiffness of that particular beam divided by total stiffness. Okay, the stiffness it is denoted by K and based on the various far end conditions and the properties of beam, the value of stiffness changes. But in this question, it is only asked up to the stiffness. So stiffness and distribution factor. So we don't have to go in detail. You just have to remember or we can, you just have to recollect the formula for distribution factor. Now, if I want to calculate, let's say this is A, B and C. I want to calculate the distribution factor for OA. Distribution factor for OA. So this will be equal to stiffness of OA. That is stiffness of beam OA. Let's denote the stiffness of beam OB and stiffness of beam OC. So this will be stiffness of beam OA divided by total stiffness. That is OA plus OB plus OC. Okay. So this is the formula for calculating the distribution factor for OA. Similarly, distribution factor for OB. What will be the formula for distribution factor for OB? It will be stiffness of OB divided by total stiffness divided by total stiffness. Again, what will be the distribution factor for OC? It will be KOC divided by OA plus OB plus OC. So these are the formula for distribution factors. Okay. Now if you just look in the question, what it is asked? Distribution factor of a member. Distribution factor of a member depends on what? Stiffness and loading. Only stiffness, only loading, neither stiffness nor loading. 
now just look at the formula here stiffness of the member oa oh sorry it is diff distribution factor of oa so it depends on what it depends only on the stiffness okay there is nothing which is given about loading here so it depends only on what it depends only on the stiffness factors are you getting this so the correct answer for ninth question is only the stiffness factors okay so coming to the 10th question who has developed the latest slope deflection method so this is also a direct factual question the answer for this is the third okay so coming to the last question from the theory of structures here a continuous beam is given or we can say a two span continuous beam and we have to pick up the correct elastic curve okay we have to pick up the correct elastic curve now for drawing the elastic curve what we will be drawing first is for this beam we will try to draw the bending moment diagram okay so for the beam here the beam here so these are the three supports and these are the loading and the loading is a point load okay so now pay attention this is a very very important and actually if you have solved questions from the continuous beam chapter then this would have been very easy to solve so to find out the to, 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 to find out the bending moment diagram or the final bending moment diagram of the indeterminate structure as it is given here we will have to first draw the free bending moment diagram and fixed bending moment diagram okay so it is free bending moment diagram so how to draw the free bending moment diagram this is the zero line and this is a point load so whenever the point load is there the bending moment diagram will come like this okay if the udl is there then it will be in parabolic shape now this is the free end bending moment diagram and this is positive bending moments now the another bending moment diagram that we have to draw is called as fixed end bending moment diagram that is assuming the intermediate support as fixed we know that this intermediate support in continuous beam or this support in continuous beam it is called as intermediate support correct and the property of this intermediate support is that it has a negative bending moment it has negative bending moment so what is the value of bending moment at the point 1 it is 0 what is the value of bending moment at point 3 it is also 0 whereas the bending moment at point 2 there will be some value will not be calculating it but we know one point that it will be negative so negative means we will have to draw it in the negative portion okay so this will be the value of negative bending moment now if you just combine this free and fixed end bending moment diagram we will get the final bending moment diagram final bending moment diagram so we'll just draw it now randomly as we don't have much time here we already taken a lot of time so first we'll draw the free bending moment diagram so this is the free bending moment diagram and then we will overlap the fixed bending moment diagram over it so these are the positive values and on this we'll be drawing this fixed bending moment diagram okay now pay attention here this portion is the positive portion okay even this portion is the positive portion because this triangular parts are positive whereas this second diagram is negative so that means this is all the a negative portion okay now to draw the deflection diagram to draw the deflection diagram we will have to use the bending moment diagram so if the bending moment is positive that means it will be showing us sagging moment okay if the bending moment is negative then it will be saying us the hogging moment so while drawing the elastic curve while drawing the elastic curve we have to use these conditions so up to this portion up to this portion it is the 
sagging bending moment okay so that means it will be like this from this point up to this point the bending moment is negative that means the elastic curve will shift like this that is hogging bending moment see we all know sagging means like this curve okay so this is sagging and hogging is the opposite okay so this portion is the sagging portion positive bending moment then this portion is the negative bending moment up to here and again from here there will be the positive bending moment so if you just correlate this it is similar to the fourth option okay so this is the correct answer for the elastic curve for two span continuous beam subjected to simply supported loads so this is all about the solution and analysis of the questions from the theory of structures part in the mpsc mains examination which was conducted recently if you want that i should post the solution analysis of the another subjects quickly then the second that is we have covered up to 1 to 11 so the second set is of steel structures from 12 to 22 if you want me to post it quickly like the video and write steel structures write steel structure in the comment section which will motivate me to quickly make the video and post it here okay so you can just check it once again at the last of this video i have also given the solution that is uh, also given the key directly so you don't have to go in this here the all questions and answers are given so you can get the answers from this okay also if you want to join the channel of the nitian academy the telegram link is given in the description okay so thank you